Today we're checking out what might be the ultimate Epiphone killer here in Australia. This is the Artist Cherry 58L. The L is for lefty if you're a right-hander. They don't have the L at the end. I'll leave all the information in the description. This is a 335 style guitar. And what can I tell you, it's great for jazz and blues, but what a lot of people forget is they can absolutely rock. So let's check it out. Welcome to the channel folks, my name's Shane. Today we're checking out this Artist Cherry 58 ES335 style guitar. Let's check it out. Here's the guitar up close. We get two Alnico 5 humbucker pickups. They're nice and bright, nice and chimey. Three-way toggle switch, two volume controls, and two tone controls. Nice and simple. On the back, as you can see, we also have a set neck, so it means you can get up to the last couple of frets pretty easily and it's got some grime on there because I've been playing it a lot, so apologies for that. The finish is beautiful. Notice the air folds also have the binding. The binding around the edges is also flawless. Here's the headstock up close. Now, this is another thing I really like the look of as well. It's nice and classy. It doesn't look weird or anything like that. It's kind of reminiscent of a Gibson headstock to some extent, except it's missing that little groove in here, and it's shaped slightly different as well, but Overall, I think it looks pretty sweet. Now, in terms of the neck shape, when I first did the unboxing, I wasn't 100% certain whether or not this was a 50 style neck because I'd been playing a guitar that had a much fatter neck on it. But as you can see, it's got quite a bit of chunk. It would be somewhere between a 50s and 60s style neck, no doubt about it. It's definitely fatter than, say, a modern neck. I love the fact they've also put the jumbo frets on as well. Now, one other thing is to point out as well, just visually, notice the pick guard. It's quite a different shape to say a Gibson or an Epiphone. You can see all my smudges on there from the fingeries that I use. But overall, yeah, the shape of the pick guard is probably its most identifiable feature, as well as the shape of the headstock and the Artist Guitars is actually under the gloss there. It's pretty sweet. A huge thanks to Artist Guitars for sending this out. I really appreciate it. They're letting me keep this guitar, but the review is completely unpaid. I'll give you my final thoughts on this at the end, pros and cons like I always do. So stay tuned for that. Let's get into it. All right, let's kick it off today. I'm plugged into the Artist Tweet Tone 20R amplifier on the clean channel to start with. I've got it mic'd up with a Rode M3 microphone as well as a Superlux R102 ribbon microphone. We're going to start on the neck pickup and I'm not going to turn all the way up to start with and then we'll, we'll give it a go at full volume on the guitar. So here we go. <laughs> And now with the volume control back up, have a listen to the snap you get back and the attack on the note. Yeah. Over to both pickups with both volume controls all the way up.
Now, if you turn the neck volume down, you'll get this really snappy sort of countryish tone. Here we go. <laughs> Pretty cool. Over to bridge pickup and I've set the volume of the guitar at about half. Here we go. And volume back up. Over to some dirty tones on the amplifier. So just to let you know, I've got the master all the way up, of course. We've got the volume at half and the gain at about 11 o'clock, which is still pretty dirty. So we're gonna show you how the volume control interacts with this as well. But for right now, let's go bridge pickup and just crank it. The cops are gonna get called, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, over to Neck, let's give this a shot. over to both with the neck pickup just down a hair. This way is forward, my other guitar's the other way. Oh yeah. All right, let's try for some more bluesy tones now. And I've got the game back down to about nine o'clock, so a whole lot less drive. Let's give this a shot. We'll start on the neck pickup with the volume and tone all the way up. All right, the obscure key of C sharp, one of my favorites, over to bridge. Volume down. That's awesome. Turn back up and you get that full sustain. Thanks for watching guys, my name's Shane. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell if you lasted this long. So what do I think of this? Is it truly an Epiphone killer? Now value for money wise, absolutely. I think in Australia now, Epiphones for this type of guitar would cost around $1,000, something like that. This is like 300 and something without a case. So it's not expensive. It feels great in the hand. You're getting a more traditional style ES335 in terms of its neck shape. The pickups are nice and bright. Now, Epiphones make great guitars too, but it's twice the price for no more guitar. You know, you're not actually getting anything extra with it other than the name. 
So in terms of how this feels and plays, it plays great. I'm gonna also link through to Brett Kingman's video over here as well. He did a video on one of these and he was really impressed as well. And like I said at the start, this video is completely unpaid. I'm gonna give you the pros and cons of it as well. So when I got this out of the box, I gotta say, I was impressed with the tone, but something just wasn't right. I checked the intonation and it was out by a mile. So one of the things you'll wanna do when you get one of these guitars, being that they're inexpensive, is the first thing, other than changing the strings, is to set the intonation, it was it was miles out. I remember when I did the live stream, someone said, hey, I think your intonation's right out. They were completely right, so congratulations for having an awesome ear. I didn't hear that at the time, I just knew something wasn't right, but it was right out. So yeah, definitely set up the intonation. Another thing that I did was also just tighten the tuners a little bit, I just tightened the screws, and just to give them a little more tension, they felt there's just that little bit loose. If I was to play this a lot, I'd probably replace the tuners if they gave me any grief down the track. But as of right now, once I've stretched the strings in and also tuned it up a few times, it's been okay. It hasn't been perfect, but it's been okay. So uh, like I said, I can't stress that enough. Definitely change the intonation. Now, in terms of its finish, has a stack up against Epiphones that I've owned extremely well. There's only one small blemish on it, which is this little weird red dot somewhere around here. Can you see that? It's like a red dot here and here. Now the fret edges are perfect. I have no problems with that. My last Epiphone had a lot of scuff marks on the fretboard from someone who's obviously doing the, um, the fret work. On this, it's much cleaner and much tidier. Obviously not all guitars are gonna have those inherent problems from Epiphone. I'm just giving you my experience having owned a lot of guitars over the years. Uh, this is slightly heavier than my Tokai as well. So it packs a little bit more weight. It would be a comparable weight to my standard Mexican Fender Stratocaster in terms of just how heavy it is. So being that it's got the F holes, you do get a little bit of weight relief there. It's got the block down the middle. So it sort of, it counterbalances nicely and balances beautifully when you're standing up. I didn't notice anything weird happening when I had it on with the strap, especially at the start. So that's pretty cool. I've also got a comparison between this and my Tokai coming up on the channel. I've already shot that video and there were times in that video I forgot which guitar I had in my hands. No kidding. So this feels really, really good. In terms of tone, I really love the bridge pickup. It's got lots of snap and attack and the output on it is awesome as well. I like the fact if you're on either pickup, but especially the neck pickup, if you just turn down, you get more of a rolled out sort of sound, which works well for these type of guitars. Instead of using the tone controller, you can just use the volume controller to turn down and it starts to mellow out if you're into that kind of sound. Turn it back up and you can unleash the beast. I really love the neck pickup tones on this guitar with dirt. I think it really sings. It's got lots of snap and attack. So coming up on the channel, I'm gonna be comparing this to my $2,000 Tokai 145L. And we're gonna see if there's a difference in tone how they compare in terms of feel and build and all that kind of stuff. So that should be interesting as well. If you wanna find out more about that, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. Thanks again for watching folks. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and a huge thanks again to Artist Guitars for sending this out. I had a lot of requests for this one. So I hope you find this video helpful. Thanks again, catch you soon. See ya.